most important part of Python's object system is the class statement. So a class statement looks like this. It starts with the class keyword, and then gives the class a name, and then follows with a suite of statements. So when executing a class statement, we create a new class and bind that class to name in the first frame of the current environment. So classes are actually just a type of value themselves. They get bound to names just like anything else. Then, immediately, statements in the suite are executed and they create attributes of the class. So the suite is executed when a class statement is evaluated. It's not like a def statement where the suite gets delayed. As soon as an instance of the class is created, it's passed to the init, which is an attribute of the class called the constructor method. What does that mean? Well, here's a typical way that a class is defined. We give the class a name, like account for a bank account, and then we define a method called init, which takes two arguments here, the object itself that's being created, and then the account holder, which we need in order to create the object. And then we can start setting attributes of that object that was just created. We could say the balance of this account is zero, and the holder of this account is whatever account holder was passed in. So this is just a minimal version of a class. This is actually executable code in Python, and what it does is it creates bank accounts whose initial balance is zero, and they have some account holder. Okay, so what is this business about initialization? Well, let's take a look. All accounts should have a balance and an account holder. And it's up to the class to make sure that that's the case. So the way you do that is to make sure that the account class adds those attributes to each of its instances as soon as those instances are created. So how do I actually make an instance of a class? Well, I call the class just like it were a function and that creates a new instance. It creates an instance with some arguments passed in, which are gonna become part of the object that we create. But we have to specify exactly how those arguments are used. So when a class is called, as we see above, a new instance of that class is created. So far, it doesn't have anything in it at all. It's just a black box waiting to be specified further. So then, the job of specifying what's actually going on in that instance is up to this constructor, which has a special name in Python. That's underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. What's going on with all the underscores? Well, that's Python's convention for a special name. So a name that has some special properties in the language. The special property of this name is that it gets called every time an instance of a class is created. So the constructor of the class is called with the new object as its first argument, which we always give the name self. And then we pass in some additional arguments that tell us about this particular instance, such as who's the account holder. Okay, so remember this is my implementation of the account class. So far, I've named the class and I've also provided a constructor it has to have this particular name. You always give the first argument the name self. So this first formal parameter is going to be bound to every new object instance whenever that thing gets created. It will be passed in as the first argument to init. And what about the second argument? Well, any other arguments here are going to be passed in when we call the class in order to create this thing. Okay, so we created a new instance of the class. We've passed that in as self. Whatever else we pass here in this call expression will show up as an additional argument to init. And then init is just a function. So its body gets executed whenever it gets called, which means that we set the balance to zero and the holder to the account holder. So the account holder is going to be bound to Jim and self is going to be bound to this new object and saying self.balance, well, that's an attribute assignment statement that sets the balance of this object to zero. So now there's something going on in this object. It now has some internal local state. Its balance is zero. And the next assignment statement will set the holder to Jim.
Okay, now we have an account with some information associated with it. That's initialization. So if I look up an attribute on A now, such as the holder, I'll get Jim. And if I get the balance, I'll get zero. Those were all set in the middle of this constructor method. Okay, so let's talk about what happens when we construct a new object. Well, we have a new thing. It's different from all the other accounts that we've created before. So every object that is an instance of some user-defined class, such as the account we defined that one, has a unique identity, which means that if I create two different accounts by calling the account class twice, then every call to account creates a new account instance, and these are different objects, so they're not the same. There's still only one account class, but it has two different instances. One has a holder Jim, the other has a holder Jack, but even if they had the same holder, they'd still be different accounts. And so we can use identity testing, as we've seen before, using is and is not to verify this. So A is A, but A is not B. And binding an object to a new name using an assignment statement, just a normal assignment statement, does not create a new object. So if I then say C is A, well, what's happening here? A evaluates to the account for Jim, and then C is bound to that object. But there's still only one account for Jim here, and so C is A. Two names referring to the same thing. 